Batman gets a lot of criticism thrown his way, both in the real world and the fictional setting of Gotham City when it comes to his one rule, no killing. Though there are various stories throughout the character's extensive history, sans his initial appearances, that try to challenge this line of thinking, it is my belief that Under the Red Hood does it the best. The conflict at the core of the story is incredibly personal, with Bruce squaring off against Jason Todd, the son he failed to protect. Though the stakes are small, relatively speaking, they carry an enormous weight. A consequence, a victim of Batman's one rule is calling into question the morality of such a stance while embodying its failings. Instead of using logic, the death of one evil man against the continued suffering of countless innocent people, it uses emotion. It hits the Dark Knight where it hurts, and it has a legitimate impact. Now, no doubt, most of you have watched the rather excellent animated film adaptation of the comic. However, I suspect the vast majority of, at least, my viewers haven't read the comic itself. This is fine, both more or less cover the same beats, though if I'm being honest, I feel as if the film is a better story overall, mostly due to it being more focused and self-contained. It doesn't have the baggage of the wider DC universe and its constant retcons, which renders some narrative elements completely pointless when it comes to modern comics. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be examining both the comic and film, specifically their endings. Though the two renditions of this point in the story are essentially word for word the same, there is a single moment, one difference, which completely alters our perception of Bruce Wayne. For all intents and purposes, this one difference changes the story from a tale about one man desperately clinging to his beliefs into one which demonstrates a compromise. Hello everyone, I'm Bufire191, and welcome to Nobody Understands Batman Under the Red Hood. Every time I do a Nobody Understands, it is usually with something pretty specific. Be it a weird idea or strange observation, the topic is often rarely talked about, or is something a great many people actually misunderstand. This time around, it is, in fact, a strange observation I've seen no real discussion over. Just wanted to clear the air on that because I've become rather spoiled with Berserk fans. They don't really give me any guff over the title and go straight into having a discussion, which is, at the end of the day, what videos in this series hope to foster. But with that said, let's just dive straight into things. The basic gist of the story goes like this. Jason Todd was Batman's second Robin. He was lured in and captured by Joker, where he was ultimately beaten by a crowbar and killed. Time passes and Jason Todd is brought back to life via the Lazarus Pit. This has some, uh, this has some side effects. From there, the angry young man returns to Gotham, begins killing criminals, while also messing with Batman, eventually leading to the confrontation which this video is centered around. If you haven't read the comic or watched the film, I highly recommend you do so to avoid spoilers and to get proper context. Though I have some issue with it, the comic itself is a good read and I do recommend it. Same holds true for the film. Starting with the comic. Bruce and Jason enter the final stages of their fight as the pair, unbeknownst to Batman, close in on a captive Joker's location. Because his jacket full of gadgets was destroyed, the angry young man is on his back foot, with nothing but a pair of handguns. From here, it's explained that the source of Jason's anger wasn't Bruce's inability to save him. Hell, he's even forgiven him for that. But instead, the fact that Joker was still alive. The pair then get into a debate about the morality of the Dark Knight's one rule. However, it takes a turn as Jason says something important. I'm not talking about killing Cobblepot and Scarecrow, or Clayface, not Riddler or Dent. I'm talking about killing him, just him. And it's because, because he took me away from you. This statement noticeably affects Batman as he looks away, his visage growing ever darker. The reason this statement is important, and why it hits harder than the debate which preceded it, comes down to how it preys upon Bruce's emotions. It digs into the unresolved trauma that followed his parents' death, and the death of Jason Todd. Now, because I'm a weirdo who reads far too deeply into things, I want to point out this particular panel. As I've stated before, Batman looks away when confronted by Jason's statement. For now, just keep this image in the back of your mind. I'll elaborate later. Following the emotional gut punch, Jason throws Bruce a gun and gives him an ultimatum. Either Batman kills Jason, or Jason kills Joker. What follows is an exchange I can only describe as... Uh, batty. Fuck you! Though Jason begins to tear up, 
demonstrating a statement from before, was genuine, Batman, predictably, pleads for his former pupil to stop what he's doing. Naturally, this falls upon deaf ears, and leads to Bruce, more or less, freaking out as he attempts to save Joker's life without killing anyone. With a well-placed batarang, he does precisely that. However, despite finding a way to win, finding a way to keep his morals intact, Batman still loses. Joker gets a hold of Jason's gun and detonates a block of C4. Though no one dies, somehow, it does lead to the clown's escape, and further drives a wedge between Jason and Bruce. At least until the new 52 where their relationship is nowhere near as bad. Don't know how it is as of now, haven't kept up with modern comics since, well, they haven't been the best. For the time being, I want to focus on this page, because, if I'm being frank, the way this ultimatum plays out shows Batman in a pretty poor light. His reaction is absurdly adamant and incredibly emotional. It puts on display the worst aspect of Bruce's one rule, its extreme fanaticism. Jason isn't asking Batman to kill Joker, but rather, kill a son he failed to protect, so that his murderer can keep breathing. All Bruce has to do is stand there and let it happen. He doesn't have to pull a trigger. However, his moral code forbids it. Because he's in a position to save someone, he must save them, regardless of who they are or what they've done. Though this is usually an admirable trait for a hero to have, it is one the story takes to task as we see the anguish it's caused both Jason and Bruce, and by extension, all those who lost loved ones to the Joker. This is why I wanted all of you to keep this panel, well, panels because the book reuses shots a lot in the back of your minds. It is my belief that by looking away, Bruce literally and figuratively refuses to face what Jason is saying. Instead of challenging his morals and principles in the face of an irredeemable evil, he doubles down on them because he's afraid. His excuse that killing Joker would be too damned easy is exactly that, an excuse. Batman is terrified of challenging his one rule himself, because doing so would mean facing all the horrific things Joker has done while upholding it. This entire exchange, and everything associated with it, is what makes the movie fascinating. Though the beginning and end result are the same, we as an audience get to see what happens if Batman had in fact confronted what Jason was saying and what decision he'd make because of this. Throughout the entire exchange, Bruce maintains I, well, mask contact with Jason as he listens to what he has to say. Then, after being presented with the ultimatum, we see a massive divergence between the two versions of the story. Instead of saying, stop this, instead of refusing to let Joker die, Batman drops the gun, turns his back to Jason, and begins walking out of the room. He confronted his one rule, and the pain it has caused to those he loved. He made his choice. Though Bruce can't bring himself to pull the trigger, his morals still holding him back, he is willing to make a compromise. This, naturally, baffles Jason. Though Batman is walking away, giving the angry young man ample time to kill the Joker, he doesn't follow through with it, instead choosing to reiterate the ultimatum while forgetting its nature. Bruce was never told to kill the Joker. Jason was going to do that himself if he wasn't stopped, and Bruce wasn't going to stop him. The only reason things play out as they do in the comic following this point comes down to Jason's inability to realize what was going on, causing him to raise his gun and fire at Batman for probably emotional reasons, prompting the Dark Knight to defend himself. Admittedly, Bruce readies a batarang before the shot is fired, however it is done so after the gun was raised. This, to me, indicates Batman more so getting ready for an emotional outburst as opposed to what happens in the comic where he tries to save Joker. Again, in the wake of confronting all the pain and suffering Joker has inflicted, not upon the people of Gotham, but on those the Dark Knight loved, Bruce came to a decision which was a compromise on his morals, his one rule. He wasn't going to kill Joker, but he wasn't going to save him either, funnily enough, mirroring the end of Batman Begins. Having laid all this out, the slight deviation in how things go down is something I absolutely love when it comes to Under the Red Hood, and is something which is not talked about enough in my humble opinion. It shows off a side of Bruce we seldom see. It displays a weakness so profound it has lasting implications which can be widely different, that weakness being the source of modern Batman's strength, his family. It wasn't the death of countless people at the hands of Joker which almost swayed him. It was the death of his son. But having said that guys, I've been Bufar1N1. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments. 
down below. I'll see all you guys next time. Goodbye.